Okay. Rappers, take notes. That's how you make a bonafide smash hit. Greetings all, it's Blue Knight, and welcome to my next series. Let's play Donkey Kong 64, the quote-unquote follow-up to the Donkey Kong Country Trilogy. Even though there are that many times between those games and this one, it's still all the same series because, well, it's Donkey Kong. <laughs> This is one of the bulkiest rare games out there and one of the bulkiest in its genre. The platforming collectathon genre that seems to have gone through a bit of a, of a resurgence in the last few years. I grew up playing these kind of games when I was younger because this was the first genre of gaming I was ever exposed to. And I feel like this is where my specialty in gaming lies. This is also where my drive to complete games actually came from. Played this style of game over and over again when I was just a wee lad back in the day. Even though I actually lacked the skill and the confidence to actually go through with that kind of commitment. And I've talked so long we're already back in the title screen. As much as I love the DK rap, one viewing is good enough, so we're not gonna go through this again go through this again. Come on, let's go through it. Thank you. DK64 has somewhat of a mixed reception now because of how it turned out, but when it was first released, it was received pretty well, and I liked it enough that I go back to it every now and again. Though that might be nostalgia, 
and my aforementioned experience in this kind of game that's talking. So I'm very comfortable with this kind of game to play through. So believe it or not, there is an entire game behind that title screen. I know, big shock to me too. So let's see DK just hop right into the main menu. And we'll start with a brand new file all the way from scratch. What does this adventure with the DK crew lie in store? Let's find out together right now. I want you to do everything in your power to keep Donkey Kong distracted. Steal that hoard of golden bananas he treasures so much, and take care of his pathetic friends. This time there can be no mistakes. Oh, your excellency. We've already taken care of business. <laughs> I hope for your sake you're right this time. No. While you'll be busy looking for your precious golden bananas, be good friends. I'll be preparing my list. 
DK, come quickly! They're gone! They're all gone! Fuck! Oh snap! Looks like Carol is once again out to make DK's life a living hell. Not the first time though, so I'm pretty sure DK might be kinda used to it. Or maybe he's just not aware of it. Who knows? So before we leave DK's house, we can actually see a few interesting details inside said house. Oh, I didn't know the parrot was actually outside waiting for you. That's something I never paid attention to before. By the way, that's Squawks. He's a recurring animal buddy throughout the DK series. So above this girder, there's a portrait of a dolphin. You might think that would be a little out of place, but that's actually a reference to the code name of the Nintendo GameCube that was being developed at the time. Just know as Project Dolphin. Also the hammock and a picture over there. The boombox. Now this corner. This corner is very interesting. And one time in the beta version of this game, there was a Banjo-Kazooie object here. Some people call it, it was a shower. I saw other people call it as a fridge. The fact is that there was an object here with that image on it but it was removed in the final version of the game. Coincidentally, there was a DK picture inside Banjo's house in Banjo-Kazooie's beta version as well but I'm pretty sure that was a placeholder, nothing more than that. You can also slip on these banana peels to make DK uh, slip on his butt if you're lucky enough. It's kind of a funny detail about that. So now let's go outside and see what all the hubbub is about. It's a pretty calming area, I must say so myself. DK really knows, uh, knows where to live. Rock! Your precious banana horn and all the other Kongs have vanished! I can't find them anywhere, DK. You'd better go tell Greggy the bad news. Rock! Don't know why I made Squawk sound like he's part shaggy, part parrot for a second. Maybe that's the way I'd be able to betray him? I don't really know. Quite frankly, I don't really care, because Quox isn't that important. <laughs> I mean, he will be a bit of a help going on in our adventure, but uh, not like majorly, majorly important. Anyways, let's just follow his orders and go tell Cranky what's been going on lately. Pretty sure the old coot is not going to be happy about this. He's got his own lab, too. Well, it isn't my lazy good-for-nothing son. Lost your golden bananas again? And where might your flea-bitten friends be? You don't know, do you? I'd have thought you'd be able to smell the work of a reptile by now. Luckily for you, all Cranky's batch of homemade potions will give you all the skills you need for your silly 3D quest. But you're not having any until you've completed my trading barrels. Now buzz off and come back when you've done them all. What did Cranky mean about training? Don't get all confused. Come on, Doki, it should be as easy as it sounds. But then again, look at DK's physique. Does this ape look like he needs training to you? He's pretty much one of the most built characters in Nintendo's franchise, in my opinion. As far as I'm concerned, DK doesn't need training, but just to abide the old coot, I guess we'll have to go through with these training barrels. This is simple tutorial stuff, so we'll be able to get through this very quickly. Like with swimming, for example. Press Z to dive underwater, then hold A or B at different speeds to swim. Pressing Z will act as a water break to slow you down. Prove yourself by collecting the coin at the bottom. A good advantage that you'll find this game when it comes to swimming, no oxygen meter. For whatever reason, the Kongs have been able to master the art of uh, swimming indefinitely underwater without needing to rely on oxygen whatsoever. It's been a thing that was uh, something they've been able to do back in the country games on the Super Nintendo and it applies here as well. How they do it? I don't know, don't ask me. 
It's just something that they're able to do. To do. Anyways, now to use oranges, hold Z and then press C right to throw them. We'll have to throw five of these to pass this little test. Uh, oranges, these are basically grenades, uh, more or less. Uh, they do bounce around, but will explode after a few seconds. Uh, and you're able to use these to deal with the enemies at uh, a longer range. Some of these uh, enemies that you'll come across in your adventure, you will need to use oranges to take them down. No if, ands, or buts about it. About it. Keep in mind, these are grenades I'm talking about, so if you do get caught in their blast radius, you will take damage. We'll go to that sparkly barrel, and let's go to the one that's not sparkly because we're a rebel. We play by our own rules. And this is teaching us how <coughs> how to uh, to toss barrels, actually. So barrel steps it up in here already. Just press B when near one, and then press it again to throw it. You can also walk around with the... Uh, a barrel if you want, but you move pretty slowly. It's no surprise there. And... That's this taken care of. There's other controls we will go over that the game won't explain to us. Uh, because this is the only bit of tutorial nonsense that we'll be going through. So uh, I will go over what more of the controls do after we do get through all of this uh, and get to Cranky. So you just learning how to swim with vines. Press A to leap from one to another, and then press R when holding onto a vine to face the other way. Press Z to drop from a vine. Just like in swimming, we'll have to go collect a coin to prove ourselves worthy to the old coot. Climb up and do so. Uh, besides, wow, I'm terrible. <laughs> I'll admit to climbing onto vines and just trees sometimes, I have a little bit of a problem with. I don't know why, it's just something I'm... Not like perfect to do. It's not that hard to take care of. Just something I do have some difficulty with for whatever reason. Brock! Hurry, DK! Go and get that potion from Cranky and let's get going! Brock! So we heard Cranky call DK his son when we first met him. That is entirely false. Cranky is actually... DK's grandpa, DK's father, is DK Jr., who did have his own game. Who we're controlling today is not DK Jr., but actually referred to as Donkey Kong the Third. It's a bit of a weird family tree that Nintendo did have some hand in making that mistake of that distinction for like a few years, but they did eventually rectify that information in their games. So to put it to so, or to, to summarize it, this is DK the third, DK Jr. is his father, and Cranky is his grandfather. Just something I want to bring up because uh, that was a misconception that was going around for quite a while. Hmm. Huh. You took your time, Donkey. Jungle Rose set in, did it? Here, drink this. And this is our first power up of the game, the Simming Slam, or the Buddhist Bashium. Uh, we'll be needing to come across Cranky every now and again to get these kind of power-ups. Right, you and your missing bodies will be able to slam the ground by pressing A to jump, and then Z while in the air. It should get you out of this area. Oh, one more thing. I've got a real tree for you, but only if you bring me 15 banana medals. I think they look like this. I'll see you later, if you're lucky. We will be needing Cranky, like I said before, on our journey because we're getting more than just a simple ground pound like so in order to uh, get through with our little as he called silly 3d quest so to go over more of the controls so see up brings you to first person view i want to do that to show there's a pool of uh, oranges at the bottom of that uh, little well pool <laughs> but the game starts you with 20 oranges every time you start a new file so don't have to worry about that for now, unless you're like a kleptomaniac and want to collect stuff anyways. So, let's see, we'll go here. This is supposed to be our steep banana horde, or at least what's left of it. <laughs> I wanted to come up here to just to show off that there's the banana horde here, and there is this little thing in the center. This is a dirt pile, and we can't do anything about that for quite a while. Just keep that in mind for later. You can't slip on these banana peels as well, though, which is, again, pretty funny to make DK slip on his butt if you're able to 
get that to happen. So A jumps, which is no uh, no big surprise as this is a platforming game. B while moving does a, does a dash attack. Z and B while moving does a roll move for DK, which is pretty good if this isn't fast enough for you. Remaining stationary while pressing B will make DK do a two hit combo. If you press B again while in this animation, you can do a third strike. You think with something like that, you have to hit the B button three times? No, it only just takes two inputs. Let's see what else. There's the long jump, just hit Z and A while moving. The high jump, crouch with Z, and then press A. Do a high jump. And I think that's about it when it comes to like, uh, ordinary controls. We can't climb up some trees like this solid one, but not all trees are going to be climbable, like the striped ones. Can't interact with these whatsoever. You have to jump onto a tree, and then you can use the controls to go up or down the tree. Press A to get off, or just reach the top or the bottom of said tree. So I think that's all there is we can do in terms of stationary controls. There's another dirt pile here in this cave, but we get some coins that are surrounding it. We're going to need those on our adventure too. And that's all we can do in terms of quote-unquote progress in this area. So now with our new Simeon Slam move in our possession, we're going to head outside and start this adventure for real. Let's roll through here. These switches, depending on their color, will determine what kind of move you need to use. In our case, it's our ground pound move. That's basically what the Simeon Slam is. If you've played a platform before, that you know what a up ground pound is, especially if you played Mario. So now that we hit the switch, let's head outside and get some fresh air. Rock! He's back, DK! King Carol's Island is just over there! He must be the one who stole your bananas and kidnapped the other Kongs! I'm taking a quick look around, but the only area that hasn't been blocked off it's that island with a cave on it over there. Brock! That sounds like a good place to start. So we will be heading into that cave, but we'll do it next time. I know it seems like we didn't make much progress in this episode, but we got out of the tutorial area. That was my main goal for today. And besides, these kind of games... They aren't known for their story, it's more of the adventure that we're looking forward to. And we will be starting the adventure for real in the next episode. I hope you're all ready for this humongous game that we'll be going through. Because I feel like I'm ready for it, but it's not going to be an easy task to do 100%. That being said, I know I can do it. I've done it before, so it's not going to be impossible for me. Just really, really, really long. <laughs> Until we meet again, farewell for now.